But well, we finished stripping up this side of the boat. Did the last eight or so strips since the last time we had the camera on. Real simple, just keep stripping, stripping, stripping until you get past the center line everywhere. Uh, I've cut off some of this just to keep it manageable because it was hanging over the side. Uh, all went pretty smoothly and now I'm ready to cut my center line so I can start back up the other side of the boat and I can start to make it all meet and finish off the hull here. And I'll to do the center line just, just like before when we line the forms up, we're gonna pull a string from one end to the other so that we get a center and then just make little tick marks with a pencil. All right. Before you do that, go ahead and take some time if you're losing, using glue box and staples or whatever, get all that out of there and just give it a quick pass with a sander. The reason for that is it makes a nice smooth surface for you to do your line on. If the line's smooth and your hand's smooth, you should get a nice tight line all the way down. All right, so try to take your time, do this right, because if you do, it'll give you, a, you know, you're going to be inside the boat looking at this and you want to make sure it's as straight as possible. All right, so I've already drawn my line. I'm going to take the string off here. I'm going to use a uh, VersaTool or a uh, uh, vibrating tool in order to cut the line. You can use a jigsaw, you can use a razor knife, you can use whatever you're comfortable with to cut a straight line down the center of this boat. I've got it, I'm going to use it. These are only 100 bucks now. It's a good investment if you don't have one. Right, so no, it may be nerve-wracking. It's certainly not difficult to do. Take your time. Keep a steady hand. I got about an eighth of an inch drift from that side of the boat to this side of the boat. And I'm sure that's because when I put my line on, um, I had it drifting over just a little bit. No big deal. Nobody's ever going to see it. Because what's an eighth of an inch here is less than a sixteenth of a here. Uh, and here it's pretty much dead on all the way down for the rest of it. So... You know, this is going to be behind you in a bulkhead. I'm not overly concerned about that. Start to get off by a half an inch, nah, and then I get a little bit concerned. Uh, just make sure you stay right down the center of these uh, inner stem pieces, and you'll be fine. Okay, so you can see it's actually starting to look like a hull, and um, when we get this up there, it's going to be pretty exciting times. So I am going to uh, put two or three more strips on over here so that I can show you how they start to meet and um, and we will we'll be done with this hull in no time now because we're on a home stretch. It's time for us to stop and take a look at what we're doing here uh, because we do in fact have strips meeting now and I promised you I was going to show you how to do that. Um, and if you just follow the simple steps I'm about to show you, you're, gonna, you're not going to have any problem at all. We've got about eight more strips left to go before this bottom is finished up. But I wanted to, I know we briefly went over these, uh, where you cut the stem before, but I want to I go over that again. Because this is a place where a lot of people, you know, we've learned in the past, um, didn't seem to get the concept. Because, you know, we can't do a video for every single boat, right? but the same principles apply for every single boat. And if they don't, then we'll supply additional information either in the plans or online or, or, um, or doing a segment in the DVD. But this is the same on every single boat, whether it's a canoe or a kayak, or for that matter, whether it's a 20 foot dory, doesn't really matter. We have an inner stem, we have the hull sheathing, and then ultimately we have to put an outer stem piece on this, right? So the question is, is well, where does the outer stem go? Well, that varies on every single boat. It's not something that I can put on a CAD. Or I guess technically I, I might be able to, but it, it's, everybody's boat's gonna be just a little shade different here. It's a wooden boat, it's a custom boat. So the concept is the, the outer stem never, ever, ever goes past the inner stem, right? Let me say that again. The outer stem never goes past where the inner stem is, right? So in this particular boat, my inner stem ends right here. So I know one thing for sure is my outer stem is going to be somewhere from here to here, okay? Now, how do I determine where that's going to be? Well, look at the shape of the hull. When, when we're here, the hull is, is coming in tight and fine. And as we come up, 
it gets rounder and rounder and rounder and rounder, right? So that means this cut that I made right here, so we, we've already pre-cut this and kind of made it clean so that you could have a real good idea what's going on. This cut that I made right here is pretty much the last place where coming up, I'm gonna be three quarter inches wide right here at the top. Because as I continue to go in further here, like for instance, if I made a cut here, I might be almost two inches wide. Well, if I put a three quarter inch outer stem on a two inch wide hole, I'm gonna have a whole lot of space on either side of it that I'm gonna have to backfill, right? So um, you, what you wanna do is try to make this cut at the last place possible or forward where it's going to be three quarters of an inch, right? So could I have cut it here? Absolutely. Uh, I only cut it down a little bit further to get it onto the bottom of the boat in case when you're paddling up on shore that this hardwood that we're going to have for the outer stem, this, this uh, ash, will take a little bit of the beating for you, right? So it could be here, it could be here, it could be here, it could be here. Um, but if I start going this way, it's going to get wider and wider and wider on me, and then you're just going to have to backfill it. Now, if you go a little bit, if you just go a little bit past where you should have made your cut, it's not the end of the world because you just put a little bit of filler in there. It looks fine. Nobody, <laughs> nobody will notice the thing. If you go way past where you should have put it, you're going to have to go back and backfill that with some wood because you don't want to put big gobs of epoxy in there because it'll be brittle. Right, so, so you can, the old adage applies, you know, for any of you out there who are woodworkers, you've heard this a million times. You can always take more off, but it's real hard to put it back on, right? So cut it, if you're happy with it, take a look, see how your boat's flaring out. I know that right where I cut this, about an inch after that, she starts to flare out real good. So I'm just gonna leave it right there and I'm happy with it, okay? That's the concept. So again, outer stem never goes past the inner stem and it always stops pretty much at the thickness of the outer stem. In the case of this boat, it's three quarter inch wide outer stem, so I want to make my cut where it doesn't go past three quarters. That's all it is. I hope that clears up a lot of confusion because that seems to be a point of confusion for a lot of people out there. Okay, so now what are we going to do? Well, let's take a look where we're at. Um, we have about eight strips left to do here. Uh, and when we've gotten to the point now where the only bend you have to worry about is this bend here. It's not bending this way or that way. And so the only thing we're worried about is this bend right here. I did a little segment, showed you how to pre-bend some of them on a bench. Um, and for those of you working along, that's gonna help you out. Uh, but we're gonna put these in just the way we've been doing it. And, uh, and when we get to the last two or three, then I'll show you how to use the pre-bends, but this should work fine. Okay. So I am going to turn this boat around because it'll be easier for the camera and then we'll go ahead and put that strip in. We've spun the boat around and we're getting ready to fit this strip but before I do I want to take some of the fight out of it, right? It's, it's still it's got a good deal of bend there and I want to get rid of that. So we're going to heat it up, same way we heated up the other ones. See if we can't make it submit a little bit more here. Now that we've got the strip roughly compliant to where we want it to go, um, now we can start cutting it in. All right, we're going to start with the other end. Oh, we start with the hottest end first. That way there, if you lose the strip, you crack it. Now, well, well, you haven't done two ends for nothing. So let's always start with the hotter end, which is down here. All right, so first thing we want to try to do is get a rough cut. So if you look, Basically, we are trying to just meet these two strips. So if I put a tick mark here and a tick mark here where it opens back up, and now I just draw a line from here to here, and I, that's my rough cut right there. Now I'm just gonna take it back off again. Got a razor knife here. Pencil and a ruler. Just gonna draw my line 
from one tick mark to the other. And then we're going to give a quick whittle to get rid of some of this excess here. All right, so that leaves me about, oh, about three-eighths of an inch there. And because I have it, I'm going to use my stationary sander. All right, so on my first pass, it's not bad, but it's not great. I've got, you know, a bigger space here than I have down here, and that means we call this a, uh, a uh, long angle. Basically means we need to shorten it up. And the way we're going to shorten it up is by taking more off down here and nothing off up here. So basically, we're going to do this right here. And that should get it right in there for us. So now we're just going to slide it up in there. And that's a pretty good cut. We can definitely live with that. All right, so with that firmly in place there, we are going to walk our hands down to the other end, not letting the strip slip at all. And we're going to make a tick mark right about here. And then we can release the strip. All right, the reason we did that is now, without having to fight it so much, I can just put that tick mark there, come up here, and make my marks. All right, so a little trick here. When you're doing this, take the tick mark that you just drew there to line it all up and back it up. Oh, about a half an inch or so, okay? And once you've done that, and you're going to make your marks up here the same way that you made them down there. All right, now the reason I say back it up is because it's important to first get the angle right. Once you get the angle right, if you need to take more off, it's just a matter of keeping that angle and taking more off. But if you have these tick marks lined up and your angle is just a little bit off, well, you, you can't take any more off because then you're going to have a space down at the other end when you go to put your strip in. All right, so always back it up about a half an inch. All right, let me cut this. All right, so this is a good case where we've got a real nice angle going down here. Everything looks great, but I got a little gap, but the gap is even all the way down. Well, what that means is if you look, we're still curving upwards on the hull here, which means I need to back bevel this just a little bit so that this all goes in tight. So I'm gonna go over there and take care of that right now. I did it, the back bevel made it a perfect fit. And my tick mark is just about exactly where it was when I made it which illustrates the point that you always back up your strip about a half an inch before you start working on it. Because remember, a half an inch here at the tick mark may only be an eighth of an inch up here, right? So um, don't let that get you or else you're gonna end up going through a lot of strips. <laughs> now that being said, if you do that and your tick mark ends up being a half an inch in the wrong direction, which means you're probably gonna have an eighth of an inch gap at the other end, just use the strip on the next one, right? Put that strip aside, make another one, and the strip that you just kind of messed up a little bit will work perfectly fine on the next one. You just have to probably take a little bit more off. Okay, time to glue this in. Okay, so gluing these strips in is a little bit different because uh, we've got to pop the ends in. I'll show you how we're going to do that right about now. Okay, so you want to start by sliding in the tough end first. Get a clamp on it. All right, and then this end, you're going to have to bend up just a little bit, pop it down in, 
and set it in just like so. Good. If anything goes right, you don't have a gap at either end and the strip falls in there nicely. All right, so from here, it's pretty much the same that we've done everywhere else, right? Staples if you're using them, if not, bungees, tape, um, and hot glue blocks. So that's it. I'm going to do that right now. We're getting ready to do the final little strip that goes in here. And it's really, you know, I'm going to show you how this boat came out, but it's really the luck of the draw. You have no idea if it's going to come out to be a tiny, tiny little sliver or, or a whole strip. And you won't know until you get there. Uh, but I did want to show you a couple things. First, when you get towards the, uh, the middle here, it gets hotter and hotter to get your fingers in there to pull it back and give it the right tension. So a couple things. Pre-bending the strips on a boat like this is huge. It really helps you out a lot um, because the strips come pretty darn close to where they need to be, but still not quite close enough. So how do you take care of that? These are just wedges, and this strip's been in there for a while, so it's dry. But these are just shims that you would get from any, you know, Home Depot or whatever. Um, and same thing that we use to level the forms back and forth, right? And what I do is I'm put, when I'm putting the strip in there is I'll use this and very gently kind of wedge it so that I can get it in there. And then I'll just take the shims, slide them in, and then push them towards the ends. And that'll push these down where they need to be. Then you can go ahead and throw some glue blocks in there, but I'd leave the shims in and just let it dry, all right? So we are ready to do the very final strip. And I'm gonna get one of those pre-bent strips and we're gonna get that done right now. All right, so using one of the uh, pre-bent strips, which will make this a whole lot easier, I'm gonna fit this in here and you know, when you pre-bend it, the curve that you get on the bench is not gonna be identical to the boat. So what I do is I just slide the strip up and down until I get to where the curve of the strip is pretty much the same as the curve that I'm trying to fill in. All right, once I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and make a tick mark where the hole begins and ends. So in theory, if I draw a straight line going from each one of these tick marks, that'll leave me a straight line here and a curve here, which is exactly what I have on the boat, a straight line and a curve. Now the problem is, is we have this bead, right? So I need to get it to the point where the bead, when I push that in the eighth of an inch, I don't want to have an eighth of an inch gap up there. So I'm going to add a little bit to the line. I'm going to make it a little bit thick. And should be fine. So I'm going to connect those two lines and cut them. Right, well, I can tell if I push on this, it's definitely going to go in. But you can see I've got a little bit of gap right here. Um, and that's because you've got the beaten cove to deal with. So you got a couple of choices. You can keep messing with it till, till it comes out perfect, but chances are you're gonna have one side or the other that's got a little gap. But all we're gonna do is we're gonna put some glue on this and then we're going to basically cut some slivers of a strip and put it right down in there and that'll tighten this whole thing up. I'm gonna go ahead and glue this in.
Now you have your center strip. Right, I promise you that when we send all that out, it's going to look beautiful. Now we had a little nick in there from when we were cutting our center line, and I'm going to do the same thing. Basically, put some little splinters in there and pack it all full of wood. And again, when we sand it, it's all going to blend together nicely. And that's it. The hull is done. Now, on this little sliver, when we flip the boat over, you may have to put some little slivers in on the other side, depending on how well they all fit down in there. But, you know, at this point, um, the hull is done and looks great. And, and again, I just want to reiterate one more time for those of you that are watching and you've never done any stripping before. I purposely designed a boat that would be really, really difficult to do so that I could show you all kinds of tips and tricks throughout the entire process. Chances are, you know, unless you pick this particular boat to do, you're not going to have anything near this difficult. Uh, you know, when you get to a 12-footer or a 14-footer or a 16-footer, they all start to elongate and the curves kind of blend a lot easier. So, you know, I just wanted to make sure that we did a boat on the DVD that showed you every possible trick that I could think of um, that would get you through the project. So if you just watched everything I did and said, I can do that, then you're good to go. All right. So at this point, we're just going to let that dry, uh, and then tomorrow we'll just start taking all this stuff off and uh, sanding it down, getting it ready for our outer stems, and then finally putting some fiberglass on the outside of this hull.